All right, I guess we can get started. Um, uh, my name is Toby Ford, I'm from AT&T, and then... Uh, Mats Carlson from Ericsson. We're going to talk today, or an extension of what we were talking at the last summit about. Uh, last summer we introduced NFV. We're going to actually go the next step is uh, talk about, you know, what we've done over the last six months in terms of, of, of evolving OpenStack to be able to support NFV. And then uh, we're actually going to demonstrate uh, an aspect of, of how to use it to achieve some level of HA underneath as one subset of an NFV solution. Uh, just as a, an overview, uh, this is the things we're going to walk through. As I said, uh, we're going to just talk to a little bit of the basics, try to be a little bit incremental to what I've been already talking about at the keynote or, or in the previous talks. And then... Uh, you know, go through uh, s some issues that we've had uh, trying to, to bring new functions into OpenStack uh, uh, around solving for NFV problems. And then we're going to go through a, uh, a demonstration. Again, for uh, those that haven't uh, heard this already, I'll try to be brief. And uh, hopefully you haven't heard my story about this already. But uh, recently I was playing golf, and then they paired me up with this guy who had just retired. And uh, we were walking along talking about what we do, and I was talking about the cloud. And he told me, oh, he was a, um, you know, I live in the Washington, D.C. area. So this guy re just recently retired. He had uh, started a company 30 years ago uh, supporting mainframe software and uh, been very successful with the federal government with this mainframe software. So, you know, we got into it, and then he's saying, oh, yeah, the cloud, it's just like mainframes, you know? It's shared thing, it's all, uh, it's all the same, you know? It's just coming back around. And then I did not talk to him for the rest of the round. I was uh, ignoring him. This really irked me, because for me, and uh, when you're in Paris, you're supposed to talk like a revolutionary. Uh, I feel like the PC revolution and the Linux revolution and the open source sort of things that have happened since Linux have started have kind of broken this, this mainframe thing and it's brought it to its, almost to its knees, uh, and it's almost gone. So that really irked me. And N of V is really an extension of that concept. It is taking what in the telco world is an uh, equivalent to a mainframe, a vertically integrated box, uh, something as simple as DNS, but done at huge scale. We needed to have a vendor provide DNS for us in a fully integrated solution that only scaled uh, vertically adding more processors, more line cards, et cetera. This is only one example. Obviously, many of the things that we do, from switches to routers to uh, more sophisticated mobile systems, are, are, have been in telcos delivered this way. And we, obviously, there's a lot of shortcomings to this. It takes a long time to upgrade. It's, uh, the evolution cycle is very, very slow. 18, 24 months are short in our world. Uh, so, extending this and evolving this has been very difficult. So we want something else. We want something akin to what we get in the, we've gotten in the PC revolution, a marketplace, an ecosystem that is very uh, uh, extensive in terms of ISVs and startups and such. We want something like the Linux revolution where we can work together, on, especially on non-differentiated functionality, which the sum of which is grown dramatically. And when you think of all the telcos and what our needs are, we don't really have a lot that's going to be really unique. We want to make something that is open, extensible, transparent. And so we would much rather it be done in, in a virtual way, in a scale-out way, in a way that's uh, easily extended. So. Sure. So I think I click it on that. So. This was also what we said in Atlanta, and, and I think one of the major reasons, I think, for what, why I believe OpenStack is such a good thing for, for NFV is that it's truly multi-vendor. Uh, a lot of the other virtualization management system are having limitations on, on what stuff you can kind of plug into it. So, so really having a, <coughs> a multi-vendor cloud ecosystem that you can plug in any equipment, any third-party services, any hypervisor, any guest, whatever, should say, really 
is the key tool for us because looking at the picture that that Toby sh showed, I think there is a multiple of different type of hardware vendors, etc., that needs to come into the same arena and play together. We also talked about a lot about the reliability. We are talking about five nines. We are talking about services like mobile telephony requiring five nines on the service level. Five nines is less than five minutes of downtime per year, including planned. That is quite hard requirements. These things we need to keep. We need to keep the SLAs on the service level. But of course, the implementation will be very, very different when you're talking about uh, a cloud infrastructure. But we need to move these applications over to a cloud deployment environment and we need to as I say, retain these characteristics and I think a lot of the things that we are actually doing now is trying to figure out exactly how can we retain these characteristics on the, on the service level. We also went into some of the examples in Atlanta talking about resource allocation, resource isolation, optimization. This is really a need. I mean you need to be able to, to exclusively add cores to a specific VM or exclusively add network capacity to a specific VM. If you take a packet core application, for instance, that will actually require the whole IO capacity to that core in order to work in a good way. We talked about the networking. I think the networking is really an area where, where I think there is the biggest need, so say, to, to improve and, and do additions. I think one thing with the, with the network functions is that you need to be able to orchestrate the wide area network, not only the, the local area network within the data center. You need to be able to orchestrate the network that is also outside the data center. Real-time response, if something happens, interrupts, the whole area around um, the virtual switch needs to be line rate to the VM. High availability, we talked about five nines. And five nines is really also, I mean, it's very much about like fault mitigation, monitoring, a lot of these things that are maybe it doesn't sound so much of high availability, but in our view is the things that we need, really need to focus on. We need to reduce the risk of single point of failures. Then I think <coughs> I was reading a lot of um, uh, the journalist uh, from uh, when we had this panel yesterday that I think there is a lot of good discussions now about upgrades and backup and restore. I think if you're looking at telecom, we should really have systems that there should never be a need for reinstall. There should be a good support for rolling upgrades, etc. Because we're talking about these five level of uh, availability on the service level. We have to have these functions in place. So if we're then talking about a bit what we have actually been doing uh, since last VLAN tranking, that is really to make the VLAN aware VMs, to be able to isolate the network all the way to the VMs. We talked about VNF provisioning, and that is to be able to provide layer three resources to our virtual network functions. Optimized data path, path that is uh, so they have to have a virtual switch that can actually deliver line rate to the virtual machine. High availability. And I think here, a lot of the high availability we are focusing on is, for instance, mitigation of failure and reducing the risk of, of single port of failure. And that is also included, for instance, that you need to monitor the physical resources and you need to combine the monitoring of virtual resources and physical resources and make sure that, so say, that whatever happens, that you have the best possible view what happened and how you can mitigate it in a very, very quick way. We are also working a lot on the assurance part because one thing that, that a telecom system, even if, if it's only deployed within one operator, is that a lot of these telecom applications will not have the same SLAs. They will have different SLAs. They may have different views on how to protect the data that is running in the application. That, need, that, for instance, means that we actually need to have complete multi-tenant. Multi-tenant in terms of uh, how, how to handle resources, but also multi-tenant in terms of how to handle SLAs, how to handle kind of trouble ticketing. We should be able to provide a trouble ticket per tenant. So I think here is also an area now where we are kind of putting a lot of emphasis and focus in also the multi-tenancy aspect, because that will be needed even within one operator.
Yeah, so I'm going to talk about one specific thing that Matt's brought up was uh, VLAN trunking. So this is a good example because it has as many of the facets of the problem space that we're dealing with in OpenStack around NFE. So VLAN trunking is essential for one particular function, the session border controller gateway uh, piece, which is in, in uh, the IMS core and how we, uh, how we manage SIP uh, calls. So today, that piece of software uh, requires direct network access and uh, control over uh, VLANs and uh, Q&Q to be able to create an end-to-end -end separation for uh, specific calls, uh, which is required for, for a lot of the phone, com phone communications is L2 separation for that. So um, that is, is a good example where today uh, an NFV or a VNF doesn't really respect the typical IT abstractions of who does what. Uh, you know, really the OS should be doing, dealing with this particular thing. But because of its past and it's just recently being ported over to this model, it doesn't do that. And it's going to take us a while to be able to do that. To, and obviously one part of the challenge in this one area is working with the, the VNF vendors to, to, uh, to modify, to look more like tr traditional cloud. So that's obvious, that's one thing. But we have an interim period where that's not possible. So we, we, and we want to move quickly to implement solutions around this. You know, we're deploying two uh, enterprise-focused uh, telephony systems today in OpenStack to try to make this work. We don't have time to wait. So we really needed this function in place. And really, it's essentially uh, OpenStack managing Open vSwitch to be able to expose what Open vSwitch was already able to do is make a network device on a Linux box be able to see all of the VLANs and, and have the facility to trunk that. So uh, it wasn't really that hard. And uh, the Ericsson people had identified this as a key, key thing to uh, make happen uh, early on. So we, uh, putting up sort of a blueprint of the, time, of the history of the blueprint to just to show kind of our problems uh, in two, two dimensions. One is really about what we're doing now is making, getting people aware of, of the NFV uh, problem space and helping to promote it. And so Mats and I did a lot of work this way. Hopefully that helps. We've done a lot of work within the community. I spent a lot of time with Red Hat folks uh, uh, trying to convince them to help me to build up a, an NFV working group that was started. Uh, thanks to Russell Bryan, very, very helpful work that he's done to bring together a group of about 40 different people to actually every week on IRC talk about NFV issues. Uh, so that's one angle of it. The other is, is specifically when we look at the timeline for this particular blueprint where the blueprint is saying, okay, we want VLAN trunking. You know, it's been a, a journey over the last uh, 13 or so months from the point in time when the developer from Ericsson, Eric uh, Mo actually submitted the blueprint to actually making it uh, into the code base and into upstream vanilla. So it's been a pretty long journey. I won't go into the details, but it's indicative of, of something, of a challenge that we have. Um, there's the paradigm shift and the acceptance of sort of having to deal with these legacy systems and then sort of an interim uh, solution to solving them. That's one thing. But then also, uh, getting at a more fundamental problem within OpenStack is just uh, we need more help. We need more reviewers. We need more people familiar with networking and familiar with uh, VNFs in particular to help us. And so that's another aspect of it is bringing in uh, and trying to get help from a broader s uh, spectrum of, of vendors and, and telcos to make this work. So. Th um, you know, this is typical of actually a lot of things, and it's not, it's not only a VNF or an FV problem, it's also across all of OpenStack is and something the foundation is trying to work on. So another sort of vector in trying to solve it we've been working on is trying to, uh, to help the PTLs and augment them as much as possible to, to make it so that uh, we, we increase the kind of flow of, of uh, blueprints and specs to get to, to manifestation. So, that's one part of it. Now, uh, these are some of the examples that uh, I talked about already of how we can help uh, make this change. So pushing on the VNF vendors and working with the community. 
we felt like in this interim time that more, even more can be done. And this is one reason why we started the OPNFV effort, uh, is actually take the best of a standards body like Etsy and the best of OpenStack and put them together and create something new that actually would focus on NFV and in a practical way uh, do allow us to create a, a sort of a, a center of gravity, a group of people, some momentum that has some weight to push requirements into not just OpenStack, but obviously Open vSwitch and, and Open Daylight and DPDK and Open uh, Data Plane, these other things that are needed to make this work. And then also create sort of a, in a test suite and integration uh, model for putting all of them together and making them work. So this is obviously a broader problem than just OpenStack. So this is our attempt of even going down the road even further to make this uh, uh, more OpenStack-like. And then hopefully in the next uh, quarter or so, we'll see actually certifications and uh, sort of code come out of the OPNFV. Okay, now we're going to a demo. And this is always interesting when you're trying to do it live actually here. Um, so what we're doing, demo on this, we have been working with with AT t for a year or so. This is really, this is a control server of an IMS system called CECF. And this is about <coughs> so how do we actually do monitoring and how do we handle a compute failure that a whole host goes down and uh, demonstrating some of the HF features that we are kind of doing so to, to, to kind of keep the service level up all the time. Um, and uh, we are using, so to say, uh, the provisioning of, of uh, the VNF we are using OpenStack. And uh, we also are using, as I said, a, a cloud manager. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we are defining, so to say, uh, and I didn't talk about that uh, in the beginning there, but, but of course, affinity and anti-affinity is, of course, a very thing that is very important for this type of application and, and uh, work loads. So in this case, we have, so to say, and uh, maybe the, the name, System controller that is not uh, so say that is um, the controlling part of the applications, and PL that is the traffical part of the indication uh, the application. So PL3, PL4 is is handling the diameter signaling, PL5, PL6 is handling the traffic or the SIP signaling. And as you can see, the system controllers is defined as one anti-infinity group, and and uh, the traffic handling part as another one. So. These are, this setup is running on, on standard HP Blade servers. Um, we are using, as I said, uh, a cloud manager for the orchestration. Uh, we are running, um, so said it is, uh, now I'm only showing the two VMs for uh, the traffic handling part, the SIP signaling part. We have, of course, a lot of other, I mean, IMS is not only one application. There is uh, a lot of them, maybe too many sometimes. Uh, but you have the subscriber register. You have a lot of other applications that is running on other VMs in the, in <coughs> in, in the setup. Uh, we also, in this case, are using traffic loading tools. We have uh, roughly around 2,000 SIP subscribers registers. Not all of them are, of course, making tools, uh, calls at the same time. But we are, so say, establishing new SIP session at the rate of one per second. So these two uh, uh, VMs is handling one instance of uh, this traffic handling part, the SIP signaling part. Uh, what is also maybe important to state that that there is session replication between these two ones, but that is handled on the application level in this case. So it's not handling on the per VM level, it's handling on the application. So the application actually replicates the sessions all the time, so say, between these, and there's a load sharing between them. So what we will demo here is to bring down uh, one of the hosts where uh, one of these uh, VM is running. What you will see here is that since the sessions were already replicated on um, 
uh, from start, so say, more or less you will only kind of go uh, activate the sessions on the standby side from kind of passive to active. So that means that there is kind of no, nothing will happen with the sessions that are already established and up and running. We will then create a new VM on a new host and you will also see that soon that that VM will start executing traffic and it will start the load sharing happen to that VM. And this will happen without any service interruption on uh, the actual service. So this is the core control server of, of an IMS system. So this is what is handling uh, voice so say in an LTE system. This is a more detailed setup of all the hosts that are involved and the Infinity group. As you can see, they are distributed. The SIC is the cloud infrastructure controller, that's OpenStack. You have the two Infinity groups for the uh, controlling part of the application and the traffic handling part of the application. And then you have the things like Horizon, DNSs, HSS is the subscriber register system for, uh, for uh, IMS. And then uh, there is uh, another one for handling like the tools on the GUIs that we are using. So, uh, are we ready then, Sveto? <laughs> yeah. So here you actually, if you remember the slides I was showing, you have the system controller, you have the four payload uh, nodes, so the traffic handling parts of the application. What you see here is the amount of SIP calls that this is ongoing and you see there is a load sharing between these two and it's roughly uh, well, around 130 calls per one and um, uh, and as I said these are all the sessions are replicated between these two application instances and of course not as I said on the application level not on the VM level so are we then uh, prepared to yeah. kill one of the... So basically what we're going to do is kill uh, the host hosting this PL5, which is the uh, seventh way in the data center. So this is running downstairs in a booth. So this is, we couldn't bring it up all up, up here. So this is, so I don't know if anyone can run down and check that we are actually rebooting it in real time. So after a while now, you will start that it kind of gracefully takes it down. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, now you saw that it stopped handling the traffic on that payload node and moves over all the traffic. So now all the incoming SIP sessions are going to one of these VM and this application instance. And then that swapped to yellow. And that means that it starts to evacuate the VM. Yeah. So after roughly 45 seconds or something, it will notice that the blade is dead or not responding. So it's just hoping that things are working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's good fun, but uh, I mean, when you're running live. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is actually, as I said, the demo is, is down in, in a booth and it's running live down there. So uh, hopefully we'll start seeing some alarms popping up. These are just hard beats and filtering only on SNMP port uh, 1620, which is special for the cloud execution environment. Yeah. So... Now it's evacuating the VM, and you got an alarm for that one, I think, an SNMP trap. Yeah. And now it's gone completely red. That means that it's taking out. So it's
finished. Yep. So, uh, so quite soon we will see it spinning up another VM uh, on um, on the eleven. There it comes. Still not handling traffic, but it's up. <laughs> yeah, so this is a VM and then you're spinning up the application instance. And after a while it will um, balance the traffic for both these. And as I said, this is um, a real IMS system and it's happening in real time. I don't know how long it takes before it's... But I think this is just giving you a bit of examples of so what type of additional features, etc. Yeah, it's up. <laughs> Good, worked. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, so this was actually, as I said, I mean, performing live, and uh, that's why we couldn't really completely control the timing. Uh, but uh, during this whole period now, there is, was no traffic lost, so to say, because the sessions were replicated on application level. Of course, during a while, you had to take the double load one of the uh, application instances so of course during that time you're of course very sensitive if that one fails as well that's depending on how many instances you have how secure you want to be but this also shows that how can we implement this type of five nines of availability and this is of course a mixture between things that we do on the application level and things that we do on the virtualization management level so and i think that is probably how it's going to be that some things we will actually not do on the virtualization management level because it's maybe too complex. Um, okay, so that was the demo piece. Yeah, I'm just showing, I was showing alarms. Uh, yeah. So we didn't have uh, the complete cloud management solution, etc., in place. So this is why we are only showing the SNMP. Yeah. So. Um, we also have, as I said, um, we, are, we are also showing a number of other things that we are doing and actually showing them as live demos. Another thing that we also have been working a lot with, with at and is what we call the Ericsson Virtual Switch, more or less providing line rate without really the need of an SRIAV, so sorry, without imposing hardware requirements. OpenStack Live Upgrade, um, maybe I can take them. I will not be the expert in answering all the questions around them. Uh, but this is really, so said, and this is of course one thing that I think is really important for um, for um, a lot of um, the network uh, applications. That is really line rate to the VM, and as I said, isolation of the network. So um, here, of course, you have the maintained VLAN tagging, 100% tenant separation, and you have the line rate to the VM. Live upgrade, this is showing, I would say, more of a type of spare wheel upgrade, so that you're moving one instance over to a ne next generation. Uh, and as I said, this is probably not the end solution of upgrade. I think there is need for much, much more advanced upgrade. But this is shown down there. VNF's orchestration, uh, this is what we're doing with the cloud management. This is really about a lot of the anti-affinity uh, ruling. Uh, I mean, how do you create virtual network functions? How do you scale them? How do you decommission them? Um, how do you actually run uh, things that are across multiple data centers? Migration of VM, fault management, performance management, and all this, of course. And, and uh, the cloud management should be, cloud management by, by itself should be high availability. Virtual enterprise gateway, that is to say how do you can actually work with uh, virtual CP, how you can distribute them, how you can handle virtual uh, customer premises equipment. ECVPN, uh, it's uh, 
about how you can provision uh, VPNs between an OpenStack part and an, ent an OpenStack based cloud and an enterprise side. I think this is, of course, something that I think a lot of companies are working with and a lot of companies need because I think being able to provision VPNs in a dynamic and fast way and so not have to wait for three weeks before the VPN comes up. So I think this is a given need for a lot of uh, operators also would understand as well. The, the last thing is that we are demo, which is um, uh, a company we acquired, Absira, uh, which is a policy governed platform as a service uh, that is a pass layer. And I think what is really what we are trying to push here if, is, of course, the governance part of the pass layer. Because if you start building this complex system, and things start to move, you start to extend your system, etc. How do you make sure that the characteristics you required actually are executed? And I think we will more and more see that, that we need a lot of advanced policy functionality in order for making these clouds that we are now doing to perform. So, Toby. Yeah, so I'll just close out with uh, one last slide talking about uh, in the next period of time, the things that we're focused on and where we need need help. Uh, so IPv6 is in Juno. A, a good portion of it is finally in, in the code base. Uh, there's a few gaps still left uh, to resolve that. But obviously for us, as, uh, in the mobility space, IPv6 is huge. We can't have um, as many phones as we have, billions of phones out there, or uh, now with M2M and Internet of Things. I uh, just heard this interesting fact. Uh, just yesterday, we released the numbers for last quarter. It was the first time that the number of devices for Internet of Things that we sold was greater than the mobile devices that we have for people. Uh, so I think that's just a trend that will continue to explode. And obviously, uh, this is an essential function for making that happen. Uh, the policy story that uh, Mott's last left with is essential. Uh, being able to guarantee certain characteristics like uh, packets per second or some level of separation or uh, authorization to do something. Um, many different realms of rules uh, have to be applied to a system like this to make it deterministic and, and really do what uh, we've contracted with customers to do. So this area uh, needs a lot of work. And um, I'm very hopeful that we're able to do something within the OpenStack community to do this, as well as I'm uh, very bullish about the acquisition of Bapsera. I really uh, believe that policy needs to happen a priori within this tools. It can't really be grafted on. Uh, the performance, as uh, Matt's talked about with the uh, enhanced or, or Ericsson vSwitch, uh, any work around this area of increasing the throughput of network uh, through a x86 host is is key. So we're doing a lot of work in open vSwitch and uh, w uh, testing out with Ericsson's vSwitch and then also uh, working with SRV and Intel, trying to find a way to make it so that a, a host can do uh, what we need it to do. This will be the key kind of boundary expanding uh, work that we do to make this NFE work happen. Obviously, I believe that this isn't going to work for the telcos unless we have a diverse set of workloads running on it. From the back-end IT systems to the NFVs, they all have to run on this. Big data, whatever unused asset we have, we need to make it work. But it has to be secure. We have to guarantee reservation and separation. So that's going to be uh, another area. And then um, I think the last two things are combined together. We will be deploying 150 or more uh, OpenStack sites, separate, distinct, geographically uh, different locations. Uh, in order to make that happen, we have to make OpenStack uh, easy to deploy, uh, easy to upgrade, uh, easy to manage in a holistic way. So good work's happened already with Keystone and with other areas like that uh, where it's obvious, like Glance and such, where you don't want to be having uh, your images everywhere. You want to have have it deployed once and then it uh, spreads out. Keystone, you don't want to have authorization uh, done all separate. It has to be in one place. Same thing will apply to the other areas. So these are, I think, six key areas that we'll be focusing on in, in the next uh, 
period of time. All right, I think that's it. Uh, any questions uh, from the audience about this area? And feel free to use the mic in the front or the back. Hi. Um, how much are you right now for services like VIMS, VEPC, just replacing physical machines with virtual machines, and how much are you re-architecting those services to work better in the cloud? Uh, that's a very good question. So, I mean, for the, the th three major components of mobility, uh, it's really just a porting of what had been in hardware and moving it over. Uh, now, um, and I think the first initial deployments will be that, the kind of legacy. Um, it's going to take us a while to, to re-architect those types of systems to the, to the fully cloud scale-out model. Though, frankly, they did show up with a lot of this concept already in, in, embedded. So it's, it's not so bad. But it certainly, there's, you know, when it comes to managing load, load across many different uh, devices, it had already been pretty good at doing that. When it comes to uh, vertical scaling versus horizontal scaling, that's where work has to happen. So that's where the whole midget cat will come in. Yeah, and, and as most of the telecom applications have been, uh, as I said, have often good horizontal scaling on application level, and most of them are kind of plain Linux application. I think we have had examples of applications that are, for instance, have been relying on Linux kernel fixes. I think that is pretty hard so to, to, to continue. So, so you more or less, you have to move the, I mean, there's two things you need to, to kind of virtualize a network function. One is, of course, that this is, it becomes a pure Linux app. The other one, uh, which, which I think has been a major challenge for us, is really to separate the management piece from management of infrastructure, management on, a, on an application, because a lot of our applications, you have actually been managing the infrastructure for that application through the application. And I think that you need to separate the management. And I think that has been, I think, the major investment for a lot of applications, changing the management structure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we want one, one more contiguous uh, orchestration across many VNFs and not one specific orchestration for each VNF. So that's, that's a key concept. Yes. So, uh, do you use uh, Solometer or something else? Uh, in uh, our setups, we use Solometer, but uh, you can talk to this. No, no, yes. uh, this is a special item so from the cloud environment. There was an alarm uh, logging uh, system. And an alarm but we are using Solometer in other parts, yeah. 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 But you're pointing on a very, I think, a challenge is that a telecom system will really need a notification mechanism and not a polling mechanism. But I think that is how OpenStack is. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Probably a good thing to do. Yeah. All right, any more questions? Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Salman, and uh, so the focus will be uh, on the high availability. I'm wondering, are you looking also towards the mo uh, mobile protocols to make it more resilient and more better because there are solutions available in that direction that allows you to, uh, to make more better solution? Yes, uh, I mean, um, I, I think in general, uh, uh, I think uh, you can actually achieve a lot of good resilience, having good network protocols, let's say, in between. And and I think we, we talked about uh, that. Uh, that I th I don't think the best way is to take the existing application as is and only move them and try to kind of do whatever we did to create this type of characteristics on the box. I think we need to use a lot of other tools. And and for instance. Resilience on network level by kind of using mobile protocols or whatever so to achieve resilience. I think that is uh, things that we are looking into. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
So I believe you, you the, the promise of NFT is uh, multi-vendor VNFs, right? And do you see a multi-vendor VNF manager, or do you see the VNF manager being associated with the VNF vendor of choice? Yeah, so that's a very good good question. So I mean, the question was about uh, uh, whether or not we see a, a unified sort of VNF manager or independent for each VNF having its own manager. So I mean, in my view, there will be some common infrastructure that we can reuse across all VNFs. Uh, so like auto scaling and templating of how it gets deployed and, and scaled uh, I think that's a good example of how we can use heat and, and its auto scaling mechanism as a sort of common denominator instead of relying on each VNF manager and its experience. Now, I think there's going to be a balance for a while because the VNF managers that we use today have a lot of inherent knowledge of each VNF and its, and its business logic and such. So it's probably going to be a mixture. And you'll see, I think, quite a bit of integration with message queuing and those types of things to make it all work together. So I think it'll be, there'll be a balance of the two, at least at the beginning. Over time though, where there's commonality, you want it to be in one thing. And it's actually defined as a kind of a step two in open NFV to look on the VNF manager. But I think in the step one is really to focus on getting a agreed reference working platform on the infrastructure as a service layer as the first step. Exactly. All right, any more questions? I think this is good. Thank you.